Hey guys, Nigel here with Nigel's Modeling Bench. Quick little kit review time. Uh, I'm not going to go too mad on this one. It's a little kit. I got it from Amazon. Um, I was in a hangout the other night with Paul and Chris, Plastic Monkey and Rally Car Miniatures, and we all bought ourselves one of these. 22 quid on Amazon. I mean, 22 quid for a 35th scale helicopter. 254 parts, 34.5 centimetre length, and a 30.5 centimetre rotor diameter so uh, yeah really really impressive little thing looks like this one's been set up it's in um in q8 or iraq or something um two options in the kit there's a uh k4 and there is the um united states army version there in the uh, in the desert scheme if you like so end opening box the um, images of the real model, which is something Rebel do that I love rather than CAD images. And here we've got um, actual photograph of the, the sprues and everything you get in the kit. So kit number is 03871. So if you want to have a look on Amazon, £22. Bargain. It's cheaper than a set of decals. So I believe it's an old Academy kit. Paul has actually done a review of this today and he's going to be doing a build of it. We may even do a buddy build. But um, as Paul mentioned in his review... It's not like the normal Revell boxing because normally, as you know, Revell is taped up loads of sprues in one bag or two bags. This is all one bag. As you can see, all the sprues are individually bagged. OK, there's two in there. That's um, very nice indeed. So it's obviously come out of Korea. One thing with Revell kits, if you don't know, look on the box. There you go. It says made in Korea. Always look for where it's made. If it says made in Poland, it's generally a Revell product. If it says in Japan, it's normally Hasegawa. If it says in Ukraine, it's ICM. If it says in Korea, it's Academy. Revell box anything. So you, you've got to be careful. But on the same count, you can also sometimes grab a bargain. Because sometimes you'll get, you know, a, a Hasegawa. I got a Hasegawa... Or Revell boxing of a 30 second scale Junkers 87 Stuka um, for £15. Now that kit at the time was about £52 I think if it was Hasegawa but the same kit in a Revell boxing was 15 So you know it's always worth looking. So we've got our clear parts in there looking nice and clear. Probably a little bit rubbed on there but not to worry. But you can see they're nice and clear so that's cool. We have our Fuselage halves, I guess it's called a fuselage on a helicopter, is it? I'm assuming it is. And they look very nice indeed, very sharp moulding. This, this is a pretty old kit, I think it's 1995. I think it is, I was looking on scale, mates. You can see on there we've got some lovely raised rivet detail, very, very fine panel lines. Looks very, very nice. 22 quid it's a bloody bargain it's um really really nice lots and lots of weapons so if you're into your weapons you want 35th scale stuff not 32nd and there you go you've got all your weapons there lots of racks and all that and uh very nice nice um brown in there as well or 50 cal should i say and then here final bag we have couple more sprues so again very nice plastic feels like it needs a wash perhaps this feels a bit greasy we've got some doors there with some more raised rivet detail we've got the the pilot and his uh, buddy's doors there we've got four rotor blades they've got no molded in sag but they might not sag we have to check on that there you go 1995 mrc so mrc is basically model rectifier corporation which is basically academy so um there we are very nice, got some big ejector pin marks in there, but they're raised so they can be cut and sanded off. Got some ejector pin marks on the inside the door, so you can have the doors open. I'll have to get rid of them, unless we have interior door linings, do we? I'm not sure, maybe they are. I don't know, but uh, very nice indeed, very crisp. And for such an old kit, it's, um, you know, it's nearly 40 years old now, isn't it? It's, uh, no, hang on, like 2005... 15, yeah, 30 years old, not 40 years old, what am I talking about? But uh, yeah, very crisp indeed. And then finally this sprue here, we've got a tiny little floor here. 
when you compare this to the sky crane I'm building, I mean, you can see just how big a sky crane was. Um, we've got a couple of guys there looking, they look very nice actually. Very nicely moulded. Have a look at those. Very nice. Look at that, the camera's picking up on the face. It's got a square around it. This puts a square around the face. I wonder if it's going to pick up on that one. No. Yeah, it's picked up on it. So that shows how good they are. The camera thinks it's a face. <laughs> um, very nice indeed. We've got our engine detail there by the look of it. We've got some rotor head detail. So all in all, really, really lovely. There's raised detail on there. We've got a nice looking instrument panel. Let's have a very quick look at the instructions. Oh, decals. Let's have a look at these. Very nicely done. Italy. They've got the Z after there. If it's a C, it's cartograph. If it's a Z, it's... I can't remember the name of the company now. Sorry, guys. A complete throat dry out then. Yeah, so I think it's Zanetti, is it? But uh, they're very good decals anyway. You can see we've got stencils there. US Army there. So allied markings there. Very, very nice. Yeah, lots and lots of placards and stuff. So if you're not going to use all these, these would be great for your spares box. So very nice decals. And because they're Italian, they're going to be very good. I'll put that sprue over there out of the way. Let's just have a quick look at these instructions. Check it all glossed out. Got some hints and tips there. Got Revell colour callouts to mix and everything. That's a shame. Um, and then we've got the sprue callout with the clear parts. We've got lots of parts that we're not using. I noticed... I looked on scale mates at the instructions, you've got all this area here, which you're not using, which is, that was on this screw here, wasn't it? So we're not using these rocket launchers and everything, so guess what? Oh, there's a bit of, look at that, even though you're not going to use them, there's a bit of ammo belt in there, I think. There's some, ammo, some vinyl ammo belt for the bullets, it's a nice touch. But I think these are rocket launchers and that, so... I'm guessing, because this was developed in the 60s, I'm guessing it's possible to do this as a Vietnam era aircraft. But then in, it may have only had two rotors or something. It certainly wouldn't have had this optical head on it. So building up the cockpit, adding all the bits and pieces in behind. You can see it all going together. Lovely instrument panel decal to go on there. We've got the combing going over the instrument panel. Get a bit of dry brushing on there and make it pop. And then we've got some weapons banks and radio gear and that in the back. Going in. And then you've got some seat backs there. They are the seat backs for the main, for the pilot and his co-pilot. Um, we've got a column there going together, fire extinguisher. And then we've got some more radio gear there. We're adding all that into the back so you can have the doors open and have all that visible in there. I was assuming some of this was weapons base, or weapons boxes. Uh, looks like we've got the main rotor head base going in there, or the gearbox. Um, and then building up that assembly there for the there's the transmission or the engines part of the engine is it and then we're adding building up our pilots it's sort of darting around a bit here isn't it uh, building up the pilots and then we're going to add that engine gear place that engine gear placement into there it's showing you which way around this goes and how that panel fits and everything got some holes to drill if we're using the 50 cals got some holes to drill there for the k4 version and then we're going to bring the fuselage halves together add the doors Got some holes to drill again for K4. And then painting the inside of the canopy. They don't give you any mass, so you'll have to be careful with that. And then adding on the uh, the glazing on there. And I'll tell you, you know, different colours to paint that. Obviously, you'd paint that after you've fitted it. And then we've got the uh, skids going on. Adding in the, uh, the lower nose section there. Adding in the little tail planes. And then we're starting on the armaments. You've got this box open here, or, or, or hatch, sorry, not closed or open. Adding in some detail inside there. And then we've got the engine door there. We can have that open or closed. And then we have the light going on the back. The fin going on. Tail rotor. And then we're starting on the main rotor head. We've got some ID lights going underneath here. A couple of antenna and things. And then we've got some more greeblies and bits and pieces going on the bottom. So it's going to end up looking like a porcupine or a hedgehog. <laughs> All these spikes sticking out of it, and you've got these sensors going on the K4 version. Main rotor head being built up, so if you are going to build this on a small display, build all this up and then just plonk it in, don't glue it in, and then you can take it out when you want to store your model. 
makes it easier to store. So the rotor head's going together very nicely and then all of that's going in there. Building up some weapons, adding the weapons onto the side. You've got your vinyl ammo belt there for that 50 cal. You've got the, the crate there that's going to sit in, so that's very nice. And then you've got the option of having the guns there, the 50 cal, or you can have those uh, those rockets or whatever they are, missiles, whatever they are. Uh, and then you're going to drop that down in there, as I say. Oh, they're, they're telling you not to cement that one so you can spin the rotor. Um, I'm guessing this will stay stationary and the rotor will spin around on it. But uh, it would be nice to see if you could actually get the rotor to go go on separately, or perhaps attach it to that. We'll have to have a look. When we build it, as I say, we may do a buddy build of this. So we've got our option here. This is for Desert Storm. So that's 1991. And then we've got over the page. Again, this is Desert Storm on the other side. So you've got lots of stencil detail detail there. And then we've got the K4 version. Um, do you know what I'm embarrassed to say? I don't even know what K4 stands for. And then we've got again the K4 version over here, all the stencil data. And obviously that's going to be a modern green colour. Uh, you have to do some research to find out what colour it is, because all they're going to tell you is it's going to be L. And L in Ravel colour is going to be something like silky matte green or something. It's going to be... Oh, it's um, No, it's not. It's not a mix. Bronze green matte. There you go. What colour is that? Oh. <laughs> so anyway, there you go. So that's the Ravel Bell OH58 Kiowa. So, or Kiowa, I'm not sure how you say it. But a uh, very, very nice little kit indeed. And for 22 quid, yes. So keep your eyes peeled. As I say, we may do a buddy build of this. We may not. We may do three builds of it. Or maybe Chris won't do a build online. But I don't know. But uh, it's certainly going to be a lovely little model. And it's going to go together beautifully. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.